Hi guys! My name is Kelsey Jorson Olson and I'm the farmer at Greenville Homestead. We recently moved our farm from Milwaukee to Shell Lake, Wisconsin, and we primarily do pastured eggs and produce that we initially sold at our roadside farm stand when we lived in Milwaukee. And now we will be doing, hi BB. We will be doing a bunch of farmers markets in the Burnett County, Washburn County area this coming summer. So I want to share a little bit with you about our plan, what we're doing for the 2021 season, how we're going about doing it, and just give you a little introduction to our farm here in Shell Lake. Garden 2021. So our garden is about 60 foot by 120 foot and this will be our market garden for this coming year. I did a soil test at the beginning of the fall and we came back with super high phosphorus levels, most likely due to the over application of animal manure in the previous years. So this year we are going to focus on heavy phosphorus feeding plants and get some good mycorrhizal fungi going to help that uptake of phosphorus. Uh, we're going to be using beer grain bakashi from the brand SD Microbes and I'll link to that as well in the description below. And I initially learned about this company from Veronica Flores over at Flavor Kit. So I'll link to her YouTube channel. If you don't follow her, you absolutely should. She's just a wealth of knowledge on the subject. The first thing we did was get this garden tilled. When we moved in, it was all grass and goldenrod and aster. So we had to till it to get ready for this year. What we did after we tilled it is we covered it with a thick layer of chopped straw. And then we planted about 25 by 25 feet worth of garlic. We've got a hard neck variety planted right in here. And it's coming up. Let me show you. There's one little baby. Garlic baby. There's garlic baby number two. Looking really good so far. So our plan for the rest of the market garden this year, we're going to be planting about 120 pounds worth of heirloom potatoes. We've got five different varieties and we're just going to do straight rows and try and automate more of the potato process for ourselves. Years past, I did it in garden beds, so we were doing everything by hand. Now that we have this nice open plot, I get to use our garden tractor a little bit more. We're going to be working with some of our neighbors who are generously sharing some of their garden attachment implements garden tractor attachment implements with us. So straight rows of potatoes, like I said, and then between those rows of potatoes, we're gonna have rows of herbs and flowers, types of plants that encourage a lot of good predatory insects to keep things like the Colorado potato beetle away from our potatoes. We're also gonna be employing some trenching, some floating row covers if need be uh, to keep the Colorado potato beetle off. We're also gonna try the neem and kaolin clay spray technique. So you keep that sprayed on the leaves. It can try and get them to stop munching as much as they normally would. And you have to reapply that every time it rains. So that'll be, we'll see how that goes. That'll be a work in process. And then the border of the garden, we're going to be doing lots of bee ball, marigold, uh, dill, thyme, oregano. So we'll have this really nice border of pollinator friendly plants, plants that kind of keep the deer and the rabbits out of the garden. We'll see how that all goes. And then we'll be fencing in our garden temporarily this year. Granted, a lot of the plants we are planting this year, like potatoes and herbs, aren't necessarily the first pick for deer. So I still want to be safe though and get that temporary fencing up. My mom and I, we planted 600 seedlings two days before the full moon, which if you don't time your plantings with the full moon, I highly recommend you do. Our lemon basil germinated within five days, which is just crazy. So we planted a handful of different varieties of basils, flowers, and herbs. Uh, we purchased our seeds from the Alliance of Native Seed Keepers and True Love Seeds this year, which I will link to both companies in the description below. For the last two years, I've been using a soil blocker instead of plastic seed cells, and I cannot recommend a soil blocker enough. First, it reduces your plastic use by a hundredfold. Second, I found it, it makes potting up seedlings a total breeze because you just drop the soil block right into the transplant pot. And lastly, it keeps your plants from becoming root bound before you get the chance to pot them up. So I'm using a two by two inch blocker that creates four soil blocks at a time. And I'll put that link in the description below as well so you can check that out. 
And my husband built me this four-tiered planter you see here. This window is one of the few south-facing windows in our home, so it's a nice big six-foot wide opening, which fit three 1020 seed flats across. It is what dreams are made of. For those that follow along on Instagram with me, you know that we've got four baby goats coming, which we're super excited for. We will be getting those goats at three weeks old, so they will be bottle babies, and we'll have you know a nice chance to bond with them. We'll be starting with those four dolings, Nigerian dwarf goats. We got them from Aubrey's Acres. Um, she's just outside of Eau Claire. She's been great. I highly recommend her. Got me into getting signed up with the American Dairy Goat Association, which is like nerd fest for people who love numbers and records, which which is me. So getting started with that has been really fun. You can see we've got this big Quonset behind us. And like my long-term goal for this is to have goat yoga in it during the summer. I think that'd be super fun. It's got a nice cement pad so you can power wash it, you can sanitize it, and then it's protected from the elements, which is great. And then you could put the fencing up just on the end caps and keep the goats inside while people do yoga. So that's one fun little idea that I have, but that's probably further down the line. That is kind of like the overarching thing that we've got going on, potatoes, herbs. Um, obviously we'll have our pastured eggs. We're gonna be doing the pearl farmers market this year in Sorona which I'm helping organize with Sherry over at Chickadee Hill Homestead that's been really exciting it's been a really great way to get to know farmers in this area is to like organize a farmers market so that's been a great experience so far and that's gonna be starting up in June but earlier this year for the first part of the growing season you'll find our eggs in Foxtail Farms veggie CSA box that they deliver to the Twin Cities area. So we sold a good amount of shares with that box. It was like an add-on. And Foxtail Farms did sell out their spring CSA shares, so very excited for them. But anyway, that's what's going on with us. It's our short little spring update. 